such a fascinating group of writers, uh, the, the stories that they come up with, this world that they create. For you as an actor, uh, what's it like to get those scripts and see, and see all this unfold? I feel so lucky. It's, it's really hard this, uh, this day and age to find really good scripts and really good writing, and I just feel like I lucked out being on the show with you guys. Um, it's a character that I love discovering with you guys, and um, yeah, I just go in really dark places. Yeah, I mean, Magna's character really kind of goes through probably some of the greatest evolution in terms of where she was in the first half of the season, where she goes, and ultimately where she'll continue to go in the second season. It's probably the most unexpected arc of any of the characters. I like that she constantly keeps getting beaten, beaten down, and then she just kind of starts being like, I, I have a voice, I have strength, and I, I, can, I can do something, and I need to do something, and starts realizing that one person can do something. I can't really tell you what she's going to do in the second season, but Lacey will start being called Larry, so. Larry? <laughs> 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 Did not see that coming. So, James and Sasha, the, uh, as far as um, uh, uh, the show having such strong linkages to Battlestar, obviously, and Battlestar Galactica became a phenomenal, <laughs> critical success. Yes. <laughs> so say we all, right? What's it like to, t uh, to start with a new show that has that heritage, but you guys have to find your own way, and, and, and you guys find that a lot of the viewers you have now aren't former Battlestar viewers? Yeah, I've been pleasantly surprised um, uh, how many people I run into that have not seen Battlestar Galactic and are big fans of Caprica, and so it's really encouraging and exciting, um, as well as all the Battlestar fans that have come over and, and really supported us. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's, it's an honor on one hand because it's got such a legacy, but on the other, it's also a big uh, responsibility because people are treat, you know, treat their Battlestar Galactic, it's very dear to them and, and they, they want you to do justice to this prequel. So uh, hopefully people are pleased with what we're doing and, uh, and yeah, so it, it's just it's been really exciting to just walk into a, a franchise already that's, that's there with fan, with fan bases. It's amazing. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate, I, what I, one of the things I like about Caprica is that it, it stays on the planet. Like a lot, I'm a sci-fi nut, but I have to say, like a lot of my favorite science fiction pieces, and Blade Runner definitely is one of them, stay on the planet. They don't fly off into space too much. That's for me, anyway. And I think for myself, those pieces, uh, it's easier for those kind of pieces to, to comment on our world, because it's a little closer to our world. I think when you go out in space, nothing against Battlestar Galactica, because it was very unlike that, because it's still very human, Battlestar Galactica. But really, when, when you go down to the planet, it, it's just more recognizable. Now, Sandra, you were saying that uh, in Vancouver, uh, rainy Vancouver, that Caprica is our life. Uh, you mentioned that earlier today. I thought that was interesting. What, is that a good thing? Is that a, no, is that a commitment? Or? No, it was absolutely an amazing thing because, you know, we're not shooting it in Los Angeles. We're not in our homes where we're comfortable with, with our friends and our family. Caprica literally was our family and it was our life and we bonded really quickly. I mean, we have crazy Aunt Lisa, yeah. Sasha's my brother, Eric's my dad, Paula's my mom, my best friend's Magda. I mean, it really, you eat, breathe, sleep, Caprica. And I hope it shows for you guys. Yeah. You know, Eric is your father, and, and you told me earlier that that gives you an interesting grandmother. So technically, because Eric Stoltz is my dad, Cher is kind of my pseudo-grandma, right? <laughs> You guys want to see your share impression? It's pretty awesome. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> She's going to think I'm crazy. She's going to think I'm a loony man. Yeah, Ron and David, the, uh, one of the things about Battlestar is it had such an urgency to it. There was such a sense of peril and movement. And, uh, you know, as James mentioned, this is rooted on a planet. Coming in, uh, that had to be something you had to think about uh, as a challenge and an opportunity. It isn't as clear cut. The threat is looming, and for fans of Battlestar, they know that the threat is coming. But I think, in the same way that an audience will, will go to see Titanic or a World War II film, you know the outcome. It's really about the ironies and the unexpected twists that are involved in reaching that conclusion that upend your expectations or, or circumvent what you assume. And, and the great, I think, when we first started talking about Caprica, it was really about an opportunity to do. Uh, to go into the interior to really investigate the character, 
even more deeply than we could on Battlestar where there was that very overt threat. And, and that's been the fun of the show. I think the challenge of it has really been to uh, create situations and, and dramatic milieus that, that are as intense and as riveting as what we were able to do on Battlestar. And I think in the second half of season one, you'll see that concept really kind of emerge and, and, and I think uh, arrive in a way that makes the show every bit as, uh, as much a nail biter as Battlestar was. Well, I have no idea what happens at the end of Titanic, but I'll take your word for it. Um, Magda and Alessandra, uh, you know, one of the things that Battlestar did and this show did, has done, is present uh, female characters that are really compelling. Uh, they don't seem like uh, two-dimensional characters in any way. Uh, these, this, these writers and these creators seem to be known for that. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? That, that must be a, a, a real treat for you guys. I like that me and Alessandra, we have two really strong characters, but in two completely different ways. And they, the young women find their own strength at their own time in different ways. Yeah, it's great. I feel like, you know, we are complete opposites on the show. And I hope that, you know, maybe some people will relate to me, some people will relate to you, but they actually, towards the end, are really strong. Yeah. By the end of season 1.5, these girls kick ass, and I don't think you're expecting what's going to happen. It's funny, though, that the writers are so in tune with 16-year-old girls. <laughs> Sense, so what kind of 